Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, right out of his dreams, this is Jeffrey, an LTD. Jeffrey, tell him how we both deserve each other now. Ladies and gentlemen, some of y'all need to go back there every once in a while, and it's my job to take you there. Okay, staple singers ain't the only ones who can take y'all there. That's who I got to, well, I have a bunch of staple singers already. I have all of their albums and all of their songs, so I just have to incorporate them into my mixes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here to talk about the Secure and Ones property program. Okay, let's click on it. You got to go to amcf.estate, 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 and you click on this accord, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, what's happening is that there, throughout the United States, there are several people who are relying on the fact that they could ride around in their vehicle with no license plate and no proof of insurance and no registration. The only problem is they haven't acquired from the Department of Motor Vehicles their title. See, pay attention. Absolute title is an exclusive title to a property which excludes all other not compatible with the right. Absolute title is free of any liens or attachments. Absolute title replaces all previous titles. You don't have absolute title to your vehicles or your home. Why? Because Senate document, it's right here. Senate document 43 lets you know what Congress's intent was when enacting the Gold Repeal Act. Okay, the ultimate ownership of all property is in the state. Individual so-called ownership, that's right, individual so-called ownership, there's no such thing. The right to property is the right to property. It's absolute. The government can't take away your right to property. The people never gave them that authority. Now they say the ownership is only by virtue of government. Why? Because of the March 9, 1933 Act. Because of the March 9, 1933 Act, which was unlawful in the first place, Congress has already ruled the 470 laws. So what we're doing for our people is we are creating the documents necessary for them to take the Department of Motor Vehicles to court. Okay? Now, you know what? This song is by New Birth, and it's called Pains of Love. And I listen to Leela James. And you know what? That's the one of the beats to the songs that she does. When I heard this song come on, I thought it was her, and I had to go look and see who it is that, and it was New Birth. Ladies and gentlemen, getting back to individuals' right to their property, this program is designed to create the documentation for you to go into small claims court and sue the Department of Motor Vehicles for your title. Now, most of you don't know, certificate of title is only colorable title. What's colorable? Well, it appears to be valid. It's prima facie. Anything that's prima facie is not the reality. They have this thing called presumption of law where you have to overcome prima facie. So that's what we do. And so we will create the documents for you guys to go in there. Now, you have the bond that you will use to collateralize your case, okay? You will go to this website and you will download and copy what's here because these are all of the things you're needing to know in order to handle that program. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Minnesota Court Rule 220. Most of you don't know about the courts, that their rules have to be uniform throughout the United States. So Minnesota Court Rule requires that you have an affidavit. And the affidavit must state 
the name that's on the birth certificate to be the same party as the owner named in a certificate of title. Now, Minnesota will say that that's regarding land. No, the principle is still the same principle. The name on the certificate of title. Now, remember, every certificate of title is only prima facie evidence. So you don't want to put a certificate on the record. Like most of you guys who own homes, you have a warranty deed or, or a statutory deed. You don't want a statutory deed. The most superior deed that you can have is a grant deed. They were created by the federal government under Ulysses S. Grant. That's where grant deeds first came into existence. Okay? It is a superior deed, especially if it's associated with not certificate of title, but a loyal title. Now, I'm not here to explain to you what a loyal title is. A loyal, starting with an A, go and look it up. Okay? You need to educate yourself as to what a loyal title is. All right. This site is here, has most of the information you need. Age of majority and trust termination. Ladies and gentlemen, go do your research. We put the information out here for you so that you'll know we're not just making stuff up. We are actually giving it to you from the stupid idiots who create these dumb statutes saying that you are obligated to follow some code. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our job is to combat the stupidity. That's what our aim is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, we're going to let you guys get back to your day. Those of you who are part of the Secured One's Property program, we, pay attention, cannot just throw documents at you. Based upon new information, we have to incorporate that. You'll be receiving something shortly. This is December the 17th. We got you. Have a good day, everyone. We'll be back later.